I'm Melissa George with The Mindful Heart. The story I brought for you today shows what can happen when we work together. This story is from Household Tales by the Brothers Grimm and is called Bremen Town Musicians. A certain man had a donkey which he carried the corn sacks to the mill inexhaustibly for many, many long years. But this strength was going and he was becoming more and more unfit for work. Then his master began to consider how he might best dispatch the donkey. But the donkey, seeing that no good wind was blowing, ran away and set out on the road to Bremen. There, he thought, I can surely be a town musician. And when he had walked for some distance, he found a hound lying in the road, gasping like one who had run until he was tired. What are you gasping for, you big fellow? asked the donkey. Ah, oh, replied the hound, as I am old and daily I grow weaker and can no longer hunt, my master wanted to kill me. So I took flight, but now how am I to earn my bread? I tell you what, said the donkey, I am going to Bremen and I shall be a town musician there. Go with me and engage yourself also as a musician. I will play the lute and you can beat the kettle drum. The hound agreed and on they went. Before long they came to a cat sitting on the path with a face like three rainy days. Now then, old shaver, what has gone askew with you? asked the donkey. Who can be merry when his neck is in danger? answered the cat. Because I am now getting old and my teeth are worn to stumps, and I prefer to sit by the fire and spin rather than hunt about after mice. My mistress wanted to drown me, so I ran away. But now good advice is scarce. Where am I to go? Well, come with us to Bremen. You understand night music. You can be a town musician. The cat thought well of it and went with them. And after this, the three fugitives came to a farmyard where the rooster was sitting upon the gate, crowing with all his might. Your crow goes through and through one, said the donkey. What is the matter? I have been foretelling fine weather because it is the day on which Our Lady washes the Christ child's little shirts and wants to dry them, said the rooster. But the guests are coming for Sunday, so the housewife has no pity and has told the cook that she intends to eat me in the soup tomorrow. And this evening I am to have my head cut off. Now I am crowing at full pitch while I still can. Ah, but Redcomb, said the donkey, you had better come away with us. We are going to Bremen, where you can find something better than death everywhere. And you have a good voice. And if we make music together, there must be some quality to it. The rooster agreed to this plan, and all four went on together. They could not, however, reach the city of Bremen in one day. And in the evening, they came to a forest where they meant to spend the night. The donkey and the hound laid themselves down under a large tree. The cat and the rooster settled themselves in the branches, but the rooster flew right to the top where he was the most safe. Before he went to sleep, he looked all around on all four sides and he thought he saw in the distance a little spark burning. So he called down to his companions, then there must be a house not far off where he saw light. The donkey said, well, if so, we had better get up and go on, for the shelter here is bad. The hound thought that a few bones with some meat on it would do him good, too. So they made their way to the place where the light was, and soon they saw it shine brighter and grow larger until they came to a well-lighted robber's house. The donkey, as was the biggest, went to the window and looked in. What do you see, my gray horse? asked the rooster. What do I see, answered the donkey, a table covered with good things to eat and drink and robbers sitting at it enjoying themselves. That would be the sort of thing for us, said the rooster. Yes, ah, how I wish we were there, said the donkey. Then the animals took counsel together how they should manage to drive away the robbers and at last they thought of a plan. The donkey was to place himself with his four feet upon the window ledge and the hound was to jump on the donkey's back and the cat was to climb upon the dog and lastly the rooster was to fly up and perch on the head of the cat. And when this was done, at a given signal, they began to perform their music together. 
the donkey brayed, the hound barked, the cat meowed, and the rooster crowed. And then they burst through the window into their room, and all the glass clattered. At this horrible noise, the robber sprang up, thinking no otherwise than a ghost had come in. And they fled in a great fright out into the forest. The four companions now naturally sat down at the table, well content with what was left, and they ate as if they were going to fast for a month. As soon as the four minstrels had finished eating, they put out the light, and each sought for himself a sleeping place, according to his nature and to what suited him. The donkey laid down upon some straw in the yard, and the hound was behind the door, and the cat upon the hearth near the warm ashes, and the rooster perched himself upon a beam on the roof. And being so tired from their long walk, they soon went fast asleep. When it was past midnight, the robbers saw from afar that the light was no longer burning in their house, and all appeared quiet when the captain said, We ought not to have let ourselves be frightened out of our wits. And then he ordered one of them to go and examine the house. The messenger, finding all still, went into the kitchen to light a candle, and mistaking the glistening, fiery eyes of the cat for live coals, he held a match to light them. But the cat did not appreciate being poked in the eye, and he flew in the robber's face, spitting and scratching. The robber was now dreadfully frightened and ran to the back door, but the dog, who laid there, sprang up and bit his leg. And as the robber ran across the yard by the straw heap, the donkey gave him a smart kick with his hind foot. The rooster, too, who had been awakened by all this noise, had become lively and cried down from the roof, Cock-a-doodle-doo! Then the robber ran back as fast as he could to his captain, and he said, Ah, oh, there is a horrible witch sitting in our house who spat on me and scratched my face with her long claws. And then by the door there stands a man with a knife who stabbed me in the leg. And in the yard there is a black monster who beat me with a wooden club. And above, upon the roof, sits the judge who called out, Bring the rogue here to me. So I got away as well as I could. After this, the robbers did not ever come back to the house again, and it suited the four musicians of Bremen so well that they never left, and they might still be there. Now what did you think of that funny story? Maybe they did eventually start a band. Join me next time for another story adventure. I'm Melissa George with The Mindful Heart.